Hi, my name is Susan Salamone, and welcome to Viewpoint. Viewpoint's mission is to bring awareness to important issues that face our community. Today, my co-host is my handsome husband, Steve Salamone, co-founder of Drug Crisis in Our Backyard. Thank you, Susan. Happy to be here. I hope I can fill Lillian's shoes. <laughs> uh, but I don't wear high heels. <laughs> My esteemed guest, our esteemed guest, is Senator Terrence Murphy, Senator of the 40th District of New York State. Thanks for coming on. Yes, it thank you. It is an honor and a privilege. It's great to see you again, Susan. It's great to see you guys. So and nice to see keep you. Keep up the great work that you guys do. As it's, well, you too. You're doing a great job up there in, uh, in Albany and in the community. My honor to team up with you. Absolutely. It was about two years ago, right? Yes, uh, yes, ago, right, right? Uh, while you were um, campaigning for uh, senator. Senator, yeah, yeah. Well, so is that two years already? It's coming up. Two years, it's got around the corner, coming up. Re-elections this November, so, yeah. The 40th Senate District, though, you know, it comprises of uh, Dutchess County, uh, Putnam County, and Westchester County. In Dutchess County, I represent uh, Pauling and Beekman, and... Uh, Putnam County, it is um, uh, Patterson, Southeast, Brewster, uh, Mayapack, Carmel, and then really all of, all of northern Westchester, the northern part. So it, and that goes from the Hudson River, from Cortland, uh, Croton, to Peekskill, Yorktown, Somers, North Salem, Lewisboro, Pound Ridge, and as far down as to the Medical Center, to Mount Pleasant, and it's uh, out to Sleepy Hollow. So it roughly encompasses about 325,000 people. I wow, it's, big, so it's, it's a big district. It's a yeah. big district. Uh, a lot of a lot of area in Westchester. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. It goes that. down to uh, it goes down, like I said, to the medical center, and then really comes up uh, right into Mayapack Carmel and comes the, the to the east side of Putnam and then up into the southeast portion of uh, Dutchess County. But it's been an honor and a privilege. I can't believe it went by. It's going by so fast. It's going by so, fast. Going by so yeah, fast. Yeah. I can't believe it myself. Yeah. And. Um, I know that initially we were working with you for election because we, um, our position on drug addiction yeah. was um, we were in this we were uh, together on that. Yeah, yeah. And so I, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, your commitment to uh, bringing awareness. Well, I'll never forget the first time I met you two. It was in the uh, diner on Route Six. Uh, when I was doing the coffees, and I had no idea you, you two showed up and uh, introduced yourselves and asked me my position on certain things, and then, uh, uh, you know, we just kind of, uh, it's morphed into a great relationship with you guys, and, uh, you know, we've done some great stuff, and what an honor it was to have you on the governor's task force and myself to be able to sit on there. It was great. It was absolutely wonderful stuff, and the legislation that we have uh, created this year was was really instrumental, uh, really, really top-notch stuff. There's more to come. There's more to come, but it is a, it's a four-pronged approach between prevention, treatment, recovery, and the enforcement, and we actually got the insurance companies to, to buy in a little bit, and that was quite the battle. Mm. So, uh, if, you know, after traveling around, um, the New York State. Yeah, could you tell uh, could you tell our audience a little bit about uh, what that governor's task force was all about, and yeah. and how it how it worked, and the period of time that um, uh, we were on the task force, just sure, to give sure. them an idea. So what happened was um, the Senate has got a task force, and I was the co-chair of the task force. So I'd been around New York State for about eighteen months, and then I had met with uh, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul who had asked me to be on the governor's task force. So what happened was he, after realizing, you know, the governor's like, we have to do something about this after we gave him back all the data. And he says, this is really, and, and I don't think anybody out there has got someone that doesn't have a friend or a personal story about someone who's had a, a problem with the heroin. And so he had uh, devised his own uh, task force. Uh, for New York State, it was over 15 days, but you know how quick those 15 days went and how quick we were bouncing around from yeah. different task forces. I, I was really force. surprised to know that it was only going to be 15 days yeah. because when I was called to ask to be on it, I thought it was going to be at least a month. 
and then it was only 15 days, and it was, and we had a vacation planned in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I saw you in Albany. Like, yeah. I saw you in Albany and out in Long Island. And so what happened was they wanted to gather more data and uh, come out with some legislative ideas. So we had sat, sat down, uh, the Senate had come up with their ideas. Right. And then the governor had come up with his ideas. And the assembly And came. the assembly, right, yeah. exactly. And then the assembly had their task force. Right. They came up with their ideas and we morphed them all together and came into uh, the booklet that we had, we had put out. I think it's roughly about a 44 page uh, document with regards to the legislation that had passed previously, that has passed this year, uh, that we're proposing and stuff that is on the books. So right. it's a really comprehensive package. Right. So, so what kind of highlights would you say in terms of the legislation? What, what highlights uh, come to mind for you in terms of what was enacted and what, what got done? Great question, Steve, because the reality was is that why are we having this heroin epidemic? And uh, it was directly, I believe, directly related to the overprescription of the Oxycontin oxycodone. And for no other reason from a lack of education because the pharmaceutical company, because if I come in and I say, Dr. Salamone, my shoulder hurts, and you say, okay, here you go, Mr. Murphy, here's your 90 count of Oxycontin. Knowing what I know, my background, I'm a chiropractor nutritionist, knowing my background, if I finish the, that prescription that you prescribed to me the right way that you were told to prescribe me, no, no, no disrespect to the doctors in any way, shape, or form, but physiologically, I would be hooked. Right. So it has just morphed into uh, you know, these painkillers being uh, going in for a tooth extraction. If I've heard once could travel around, I've heard probably six, seven times a 16 year old getting a 90 count of Oxycontin for a tooth extraction. And then next thing you know, they're, they're, they've got a problem on their hands. So right. uh, some of the legislation that we had passed, which I'm very proud of, and you were part of it too, is that um, no longer a 30 day count. For an acute injury, you're only allowed a seven day supply and then you'll have to go back to your doctor. And if you have a, these exorbitant amount of copays, the copay should be for the 30 day. Right, right. okay, Okay. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. acute injuries, seven days. I think Chronic surgery injuries. too. I think surgery too. Well, it, 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 you, you've got to uh, establish whether it's an acute injury or it's a chronic, if it's a chronic injury, then you can get your, your, your prescription, your 30 day prescription. But the reality is it brings aware, it's bringing awareness to the doctors. The doctors are the ones that were, were uh, prescribing like massive amounts of painkillers. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about it, it's easier for a doctor to prescribe a painkiller than just to really try to figure out what's causing it's the It's a pain. quick fix for them. Yeah. So I think it's the path of least resistance and it makes sense, but I think, as Susan said, it's the legislation is preventing doctors from abusing it, but also it's causing a lot of doctors that didn't realize that there was they were there was a problem out there that it could be caused by their prescribing Correct. Correct. to now realize, Correct. wow, I need to take a look at this. Yeah. So so that's part of the that's part of in the package that we passed is that uh, medical doctors will have to have education, Excellent. formal education with uh, pain management. Great. Yeah. yeah. Three. Uh, th how many? Three hours? I don't remember. Three out of the twelve hours that they're required. Okay. Has to be within within um, pharmaceutical. Great. Yeah. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. That's very good, actually. Do you know how, what, I forgot how many doc, like it's all the, um, all the healthcare providers mm -hmm. have to take those three hours. Yeah, CEUs, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pa pediatricians, not well, only people that prescribe opiates. Well, here's where I, th I, I think you just cut it off in, in general is just teach it in medical school. Right. You know, you, when you're doing your pharmaceutical classes, I, you got to, yes, they do get a, a, a slight formal education about it, but not the in-depth to the magnitude where we're literally losing kids. Exactly. Literally losing kids. Oh, literally. Of, we're, yeah. we're really mm -hmm. losing a lot of kids. We yeah. lost a lot of kids in the last month. But, you know, I got to tell you, I got to congratulate you guys because, you know what, um, you know, the 18 months, 20 months ago when I met you, you know, when you taught, when you said the word heroin, it was, ugh. And people are having that conversation at their dinner table every night nowadays. And that's what we have to be doing, the really. The stigma uh, of a heroin addict is completely different, I believe, than what it was two years ago. And so from bringing the magnitude to it, the, the enlightening of it, and realizing these people have problems, but the problem was due to X, Y, and Z, and now we're addressing X, Y, and right, Z. Right, exactly. Well, it's you know, a, some people think that when, when a person can be addicted first time out, okay? Because they are predisposed, uh, predisposed 
to addiction. So you give that 16 year old one Percocet for that wisdom tooth mm -hmm. and that starts the ball rolling for them. And you know, that's true about alcoholism. We, you know, alcoholism is substance use disorder. Sure. It is, sure. alcohol is a drug just like Percocet is a drug. Yeah. And I've heard that before about alcohol. People can get addicted on their first drink because there's a predisposition to having substance use disorder. And that is what, it's kind of terrifying when you think about it. Yeah, you know what, our, our chromosomes, our genes are, are cut the way they are. And you know what, if you allow that to happen, you, you, you can go down that slippery slope. Yeah. So see, you gotta be mindful of it. Parents need to be mindful of yeah. it and be on the lookout for it. Yeah. And if it runs in the family, they have to understand that there's, at, there's risk there. Yeah. And uh, to just educate their kids and, yeah. and be, um, keep their eyes wide open. Another good thing that happened with, with, with the law that, uh, that the governor passed, that we passed, it was that um, there's, from now on, if you uh, have a person that comes into the hospital on an overdose and they say, I'm in, I want treatment, they can turn around, un no questions asked, 14 days, no you are. You are means utilization review. So at a minimum of 14 days. But what the, this is where I worked out with the Lieutenant Governor was that, so instead of the, um, what do I want to say, the, the sober home, or not the sober home, the, 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 the place where they're the staying, inpatient, yeah. the inpatient facility, saying, okay, you're done. We put objective findings in there. So in other words, if the person comes in and they say, well, I'm ready to, you're ready to get treatment. Well, or do you still have a fever? Are you going through withdrawal, this and that? So there's, there's actually stuff that you can actually, you know, take the pulse on versus saying, well, you know what, you, Susan, you look fine, so why don't you go? But no, you still have other symptoms that are going on. So we put these objective standards and OASIS is going to be in charge of figuring that out. So okay. there's, oh, there's, there's, there's some great. checks and balances of 14 days, no questions asked, then they start their utilization review, and then it's the process of, okay, you need another 14 days. So right. we didn't want to put a 30-day stay on this because I might need 45, you might need 30, you might need 90. So if you have these uh, findings that you're still, you're still testing positive on, so to speak, then you're still stuck. That's excellent. Right. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And how are the insurance companies reacting to that? Yeah, I mean, how, what are you finding? I mean, I know that's been a problem. It, it, it has not been part of the solution up to, up yeah. to now. So where, where are we at with I that? I got to tell you, honestly, Steve, it was my number one battle. It was my number one battle, the insurance companies. And Senator Seward is the uh, chairman of the insurance uh, uh, commission in New York State that I've, I sat down and had numerous conversations. As a matter of fact, we did a task force meeting up in, um, in um, Oneonta for him. And mm -hmm. he, he realized right then, he goes, okay, something's got to get done. And so it was, it was it, and it's still going to be a battle. So this is going to be a big step in the right direction, but yeah. there's more to come. So we'll find out what has gone right with this, what has gone wrong with this, and we're going to add to it. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, the insurance companies, I mean, look, there's a lot of points to the problem, a lot of areas that need to be fixed. The pharmaceutical companies need to be brought on board, the insurance companies, law enforcement, the schools. It's a, it's a complex issue. It is yeah. a complex yeah. problem that we're dealing with. I've met with Pfizer, and I've met with a few other pharmaceutical companies. How in about the, Purdue? Did you yes, meet? with them. Wow. So, yeah, so I met with them. Okay. And so what they're trying to get is the abuse deterrent treatment, which is basically instead of you taking three Oxycontin, one every six hours, you're going to take one for the day. It's slower absorbing, yet you get the same effect. Yeah. But if you try and take that and you try and break it down and grind it down or take a hammer, right. so it turns into a Skittle. Yeah. I, I know about excellent. that. Uh, it's very, very good. So yeah. it's uh, well, that's a. That's interesting. So a, I guess it, there's a chemical reaction to the coating that breaks right. that. Exactly right. So the molecular molecules in there formulate a different way versus it being absorbed versus trying to be heated up, trying to be grinded gotcha. down, or right. trying to be it's smashed. Just so they can't shoot. And it. they can't. So I, you I've literally right. taken a hammer to one of them and hit it down, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. So so, so you um, spoke with with Purdue Pharma. You feel that there is an awareness or an admission that they were culpable on this problem or yeah, I'm or? not going to say there was an admission I'm going to say they're at the table okay and that's a great start it is a great start uh, they're at they're sitting at the table they're all realizing that this is a this is not only a, a, a problem for New York State it's a national problem it's a national and problem. Uh, it needs to be addressed and that's why their uh, their movement to the abuse deterrent uh, uh, treatment 
with regards to taking the one pill and have it slow absorbing and that type of stuff. And, and so they're, they're, they're getting on board, yes. So that's a lot of stuff you just talked about. I yeah. mean, it seems to be like out right on the forefront, which is great. We need to keep pushing, but yeah, that's, there's no doubt. it's a start for sure. We it's can't keep, the, the conversation has to keep going. That's the continuing. But the problem is that people, there's so many issues. Uh, there's issues around education, which we'll talk about next, but people get distracted. So they forget that this is happening. Sure. And parents and people that are losing children, they really don't want to come out and say what their child died of. Of course. You know, it, it is the, the stigma you spoke about. So the problem, the issue is trying to keep the conversation going, trying to keep people engaged. But I gotta tell you, I think we're doing a great job of that. I think we look are. What, look what we did, what was it? Yesterday, the day before? The Shed, shed the, the Mets. Med. <laughs> yeah. We did Shed the Mets, right? How much we picked up about 100 and 150 pounds? It was pretty impressive to see some of those people, with some of the bags that people were bringing yeah. in. Uh, it's mean, amazing. You picked one of those bags that could, yeah, it goes. I didn't I had no idea where where to to drop this off. Right. And just for the for TV purposes, at every single police department in the 40th Senate District, there is a medication drop box. You can go to your police department at any time and drop the drop your unused medication or your expired medication off there. So we do. We've teamed up together, and uh, you know, uh, has I believe is, has continued that's a, beating that's the a, drum. And I tell you what, that's a big feat. You got the all four, the 40th district completely covered with the med, uh, you know, med drop, and I think yeah. that's that's very impressive. Yeah. When we started two years ago, there was none of that. Four years ago, we started. What, four years. I mean, when, when <laughs> oh, okay. when we first started working with Senator Murphy. Oh, okay. Two years ago. Yeah. It was all. It's all new. It's all, all in the new. past couple of years that that's happened. It has been absolutely awesome working with you guys. You just, you know, like you said, sometimes you you just kind of you go you, you hit the peak and then you come back down. You hit the peak. Right. That's and exactly what happens. And so it's like, happens. come on, get up, <laughs> come get on, up. get up. You know what I mean? Let's and start so, again. And what do we do? We go, we go out and we beat the drum again. So right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, right. It's, right. So it's energizing to work with mm -hmm. you. It really gives us a lot of it gives us a lot of energy, which yeah. you know, to move forward, to push forward. Right. But I have a question for you: Why didn't the task force come into the 40th district? You know, the governor had his. You mean the governor's task yeah, force? Yeah, the governor's right. task force. Because my task force did. Okay. I mean, the Senate's. Right. Task you force had. Did. Yeah. I exactly. had mine. Uh, the governor's task force, as you know, it was 15 days, uh, 15 days long, and I think they held a total of uh, eight. Was it was it was it eight? I was going to say five or six, but they originally were going to do five or four, but then they or five, yeah. but then they got called to different areas. So they, and they unfortunately, a, a lot of it was during session time, and so it was up in Buffalo, it was out in Long Island, it was in New York City, Staten Island, and, Brooklyn. Right. So you know why he didn't pick his hometown, his home. You know, I mean, yeah. being from Westchester County or in the Hudson Valley region, which you know, listen. I always look, and I, I've, I've formed the coalition because you have sometimes you have these the upstate and the downstate, and then there's New York City. So downstate would be Long Island, then there's New York City, and the upstate is anything north of Albany. So the the well, Hudson the Valley, middle. yeah, exactly. So we're always no, not anymore. I well, guess. this is I, got, I have a request. I just had a call today from someone who had called me maybe about a month ago to find out if we could do a review of what happened at the Heroin Task Force in uh, somewhere in your district, like maybe Mount Kisco, and get some of the people that were on the, the task force to come down and talk to the people in Westchester and the Lower Hudson Valley. Great idea. What, to, to, do, a re to do a readout of what happened, what was accomplished? Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, listen to the community, just like they listen to the community in Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long Island. Listen to the community in our area and, and hear what they have to say, because really that's what they were. They were listening sessions. Well, I, you know and then, what? and then a recap of of uh, what laws were passed, and maybe what people think they that still needs to be done. Oh, I'm not stopping. Trust me, God yeah. willing, I get reelected in November. This is just going to go on. We're going to, I'm going to continue on with this task force for sure. So we're going to. This isn't. This isn't. We well, I, we yeah, had I, one here in. Um, uh, we had one in Westchester County. I know I worked with Senator Serino on one. I believe was in. Believe it was in Putnam County. And so we tried to hit the counties, you yeah. know, within within the area because by the time we go to every, we we just virtually no, couldn't right. get to every town. No, within the district. I mean, I, myself, I'm over 25 towns, uh, you know, that I represent, and, and it, it would just be virtually impossible. So to your point, absolutely, this isn't. This is just we scratched the surface. 
with this. That's right. This, keep is, going. This, is, this is, we're, we're definitely moving forward. We will continue to do this over and over and then have them in a different area. So if you had one in Mayapak, we'll have one in Patterson. You know what I'm saying? So keep hitting the areas. Right. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. We can talk further about that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's easy. That's, that's easy. Not, that's not a problem. We're not, we're, this, we're, we're only beginning. Okay. You think we could switch gears a little? With you, whatever you like. Sure, you're the host, whatever you say. <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit about what you brought up earlier about the oil, the oil in um, the Hudson River. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. So we had a huge press, press conference this morning. Um, what's happening right now is the federal government is trying to uh, create 10 new anchorage um, places within the Hudson mm -hmm. River. And so these uh, basically... Uh, two of them are going to be by Indian Point, uh, and it uh, goes from Yonkers to Kingston, and it's a, it's okay. a, it's a significant amount of, of uh, riverfront. Okay. And uh, what's happening is they want to create ten new anchorage spots where they can put these um, tankers or these vessels and anchor them there. And so these vessels could be over fifteen hundred square, uh, fifteen hundred feet long. Right. Uh, they could carry oil. Mm. crude oil they're not manned there's no lights on them and they could stay there till they till they want to take them out are they, gonna, just, are they taking the oil from those tankers and doing something with them in these towns is that the idea is the objective I, I, the the idea is is that to not even have them it is a major malfunction there's been absolutely zero transparency from the federal government to the coast guard to the um, to New York and New Jersey mar uh, Maritime, uh, to the Port of Albany, nothing's been been put in. So now I'd like to have some uh, public hearings with regards to what exactly are you doing? Yeah, why are they doing? Why, why yeah, are exactly? They doing? That was the my question. The transparency has it been up. absolutely nil. It's been under the covers the entire so time. So they're just trying and to get it to have, happen. That's you not got the it. right thing. You know what? And I tell you what, it's, it's opposite of what they're trying to do with the Hudson River, which is they're trying to improve exactly and 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 put housing on the river and clean the river up. It's just totally contrary Steve, to to exactly to your point. Exactly to your point. What about the revitalization of Yonkers? Yes. The revitalization of Peekskill. Yep. The revitalization of Cold Spring up in and, the area and. Right. We've got These Beacon people, Poughkeepsie's trying to do a whole waterfront project. These yeah. business people have spent thousands and thousands of dollars, and now you want to come and put oil tankers there? I didn't even get into that in, in, in the press conference because there, I was more worried about the transparency. I was more worried about the environmental factors. And right. the big one for me was security. Yeah, You're that's gonna, the other, I mean, yeah. you, we are living in a completely different world than we were living years ago. The terrorists... Or, or, or if they want to figure out some place to go, you're going to have an oil barge there that's 1,500 feet long, yeah, and then you're going to be able yeah. to blow one up there and blow it up, and or just blow a hole in it, let the oil leak. You'll destroy it, destroy it. Oh, yeah, the leaks alone, the right. contamination right. Uh, hazard alone is, is pretty significant. So yeah. it was unbelievable. We we had a wonderful press conference. Um, County Executive Molinaro was there. Oh. Uh, I think County Executive Estorino, County Executive Odell. Okay. Uh, so we, we, you know, it was it was a big deal. It was I a can just imagine deal. hearing on going to a public hearing on something like that. I mean, there would be an outcry, yeah. I would think, from most of the community. Um, I don't know the positive side of this. I haven't yeah. heard anything. People ask, so what what are they trying to do? I said. I don't know. I don't know the positive side of this, of why they would want to take oil tankers or just these big, huge tankers and moor them, you know, all up and down the Hudson River. So when you have on your boat, it's sometimes it's bad enough, it's narrow enough. Right. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of answers and that we sides? need to know. Both yes. sides yes. of the river. Yes, both sides of the river. Wow, that's really unbelievable. I, yeah. uh, when you mentioned that, when you first came in, I was like, wow, I, why is that? Why are they doing that? And talk about what being under the radar. Themselves? I mean, yes. no one knows yeah. about yeah. 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 No yeah. one knows that's, about That's it. the scary part. And ironically, yeah. the, the, uh, the, the deputy town supervisor in Cortland, uh, Frank, had, had said to me, he goes, you know what? They came up to me. The, the naval militia came up to me, came up to us, me and the town board, about a month ago. I'm sorry, in May, and asked us if they would be able to... Um, Put an emergency. They want to run at the naval militia, a run, a run, an emergency out on the water in case a barge grounded. Oh, that was in May. Okay. And they thought, oh yeah, sure, no problem. We'll set up the tent. We'll give you some water. The whole ten yards. Now fast forward, May, June, July, August. We're in. Now this is coming to forefront of that. Now they want to put the barges. 
Wow. Mm, so they were so, checking it out. Yeah. They were checking the area out to yeah. see if it yeah. was suitable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, so you're starting up another task force? Yeah, oh my gosh. I, I, I most certainly will be doing some public hearings. Good for you. Good for That's you. for sure. Yeah. That, People should know what's going that on. That really Absolutely. is, uh, it's, it's amazing the things that can happen and you don't even know what is going on around you. And uh, it's important that we do know what's happening in our community because yes. uh, something like this could pass without anybody knowing that it's even happening. And all of a sudden, exactly they're there. Right. No, I, yeah. Exactly right. You, matter of fact, it's interesting because you talked about your Minute with Murphy. Is that what it's called? Yes. Uh, yeah, so why don't yes. you tell everybody what that's oh. about? It's a, it, to your point that, you know, yeah. disclosure, what's going on, what's happening in government. So I never knew what they did in Albany. When I, before I became an elected official, state elected official, I never knew what they did in Albany. So my idea was to, when I got elected, to do what we call Minute with Murphy. And it's just a legislative update. It's an update of what we've done for the week to let people know what we've done in the community and what we're doing up in Albany for them. Any bills that are passed, anything that's on the horizon, because I never knew. So I right. said, well, what the heck? We might as well let people know what we're actually doing in Albany. And, and I got to tell you, it's been, it's been wonderful. So we do a show. I wouldn't say a show. It's, it's a review every week. Lasts for maybe about five, six minutes. Tops that. I know it's a minute with Murphy kind of an oxymoron there, but we try and give them the update. And it's been working out really wonderful just to people come up and say, keep it up. I never knew that uh, that's what you were doing in Albany. So people can so, see what's going on with yeah, government, what's yeah. happening, what you're doing. And exactly. it's, it's, a good, it's a good way to, to keep the, the community you know, abreast of what's going on. Yeah. Yes. So, well, I'm trying. And well, it, you're, it, doing, you're doing it, a terrific job and we are behind you 100%. You know, we are definitely you, voting Susan. for you and and recommending you on our website Absolutely. and on our Facebook pages. And uh, we so appreciate you coming on today. It is and we'll my have honor. to do it again because, you know, you have so, so much information you could give our audience. We really appreciate your time. Just doing this alone and getting the message out there right. to the people is, is, is very important to let them know what you're doing. But and it you're, is an you're, honor and a privilege to be able to And we to appreciate your willingness to come Honestly. on and talk so openly Anytime, with us. Anytime, absolutely. Phenomenal. Thank my you honor. so much. Thanks so much. And thank you for viewing coming on and viewing us, and um, we'll hope to see you soon.